counting double digit thousands. Ray Allen is one of the greatest shooters we've ever seen, and I don't think anyone can argue against that. On top of that, he has an extremely aesthetic jump shot that many people have tried to imitate. Before I detail what made Allen's shot so effective and good looking, I want to make a quick point about the progression of shooting technique over time. Many people say that Allen has perfect technique, and this was true of the 90s and early 2000s. He has a high set point, somewhere above the top of his head, and he gets a lot of lift because he jumps fairly high off the ground. And yet, the best shooters of today's generation, like Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, James Harden, Mike Conley, Eric Gordon, etc, etc, tend to use a different kind of set point, and a different height of jump when they shoot. The smaller players now have a lower set point and a smaller jump because they need to generate more power behind their shot. I'll link my guide to NBA set points at the end of this video, so check it out if you're interested to learn more about why the optimal set point has lowered over time. In the meantime, Allen has some distinctive features about his jump shot that I'm going to analyze. Let's look more into Allen's set point. As you can see, he brings the ball to a point where it is about 2 inches off the top of his head. The back of the ball is halfway to the rear of his head. This is as far back as the ball goes, and therefore it's his set point. It's very different to today's model shooters like Clay Thompson. His set point is somewhere in front of his head, not above it and the ball never reaches that far back relative to his head. I believe that a lower, further forward set point allows players to shoot with more range, which explains the rise of extended shooters like Steph Curry and Damian Lillard. Allen dips the ball after he catches it. This means that he brings the ball down from where he catches it initially. He actually has a very low dip, and the bottom of the ball is only a couple of inches away from his knees. The low dip is something that many coaches try to remove in younger players, but as you can see, it did Allen fine in his career. I think that a reasonable dip somewhere between the knees and the hips helps a shooter with timing and power, and is something you should incorporate into your own shot. Ray Allen jumps a little higher than I would advocate for shooters nowadays, but he does jump forward unlike some other high jumpers like Derrick Rose. This forward jump, which makes him look like he's leaning back, adds power to his shot by adding forward momentum. Think about it like this. You can shoot a half court shot easily if you take a run up, because you have momentum. If you stand still however, it's much harder to even reach the basket because you have no forward momentum to transfer the ball. The forward jump is a smaller scale of the half court example. Allen does something that is generally looked down upon in the shooting world, the offhand flick. Most coaches would advocate for an offhand that simply loses contact with the ball before the release, instead of Allen's offhand which actually flicks forward during the release. This one is hard to explain, and I don't think it's something that you should try to copy. In my opinion, it doesn't add much to your shot, other than another moving part, aka something else to go wrong. One of the reasons that Clay Thompson has such a nice looking and effective shot is that there are so few moving parts and his form is very linear. Allen's thumb flick isn't what made him a great shooter. It was his endless hours of shooting with above average technique that did. Allen has an interesting rhythm to his shot. He has a conventional two motion shot. The first motion is relatively smooth, where he brings the ball from its lowest point to his set point above his head. During this motion, Allen brings the ball on an arc out in front of his body. I think his arc is a little more exaggerated than with most players, meaning the ball reaches further away from his body than it does with other players. The second part of his shot is a lot quicker and more explosive. This makes his shot quicker in general, as well as providing the power behind his shot, because he doesn't transfer much energy from his legs, despite his high jump. Allen releases the ball at the very top of his jump, meaning that he does not transfer any power from his legs to the ball. Once again, I'll link my physics of a jump shot video at the end of this one if you want to find out more. Put simply, because Allen begins to release the ball at the apex of his jump, he does not transfer any momentum from his jump to his actual release. Players like Steph Curry release the ball as they are still rising from their jump, allowing them to transfer momentum from their body to their release.
Because Alan does not do this, all the power behind his shot comes from his shoulders and arms. This is what makes his shot look somewhat jerky or fast twitch compared to a smoother shooter like James Harden. I think this is the reason that Allen, despite being 6 foot 5 inches tall and very athletic, never had the shooting range of a player like Steph Curry, who's only 6 foot 2 or 3 inches and clearly not as strong. Curry just has far superior power transfer from his legs or his jump to his release. Something that Allen did which all good shooters do is the turn. As you can see, his shooting side foot, in this case his right foot, is placed slightly further forward than his offside foot, in this case his left foot. This indicates to us that he is not facing directly to the rim. Instead, he is turned very slightly away from his shooting shoulder, his right shoulder. This allows for his shooting arm to be free from any unnecessary tension or stress during the shooting motion. The way to test this is to raise your shooting arm in front of you. Raise your extended arm so that it makes a 90 degree angle with your body before lowering it. Now raise your extended arm a little bit further out to the side so that it makes a 135 degree angle from your body. You should feel less tension in your shoulder on the second attempt. The first attempt is the equivalent of facing directly to the basket when you shoot because both your body and your arm are pointing to the basket. The second attempt is like turning slightly away from your shooting side, which Alan and many other shooters do. Some of you may think that this video was a negative review of Alan's shooting. This is not the case. Alan is undeniably one of the best shooters to ever play in the NBA. He had a fantastic career, and currently sits atop the all-time three-pointers made list. However, I would say that NBA shooting has moved on from the mold of Ray Allen's shooting style. The best shooters of today's game no longer use two motion shooting with late release timing and a high set point, and I suggest that you follow suit. We can appreciate the greatness of players from the past while still moving with the advances and improvements of today's pioneers. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you want to help this channel out, then give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. If you really want to help me grow, then share this video on different platforms with your friends to give it more exposure.